Sports Trust acts as an implementation partner to its trustees, stakeholders and corporate donors. It distributes sporting equipment, kits and installs sports facilities in rural and historically disadvantaged communities in South Africa across all sporting codes for both abled and disabled sports. This year's Sports Trust Gold Challenge guests were treated to an African style Shabin welcome, with marimba bands playing and guests enjoying all the local flavours that were on offer. I've got some of the biggest accounts in the country and I felt so good to think that you give a man a little bit of hope, a little bit of courage. And this is what we got to do and this is what the Sports Trust are doing. They're helping the local people, they're helping development of golf and other things that are important. We've got to try and develop and find a young black golfer in South Africa to become a Tiger Woods. And we can, with encouragement and good coaching, uh, this can be done. So I'm very, very um, excited about the way. And golf, people, South Africans don't realize, Caroline, but in golf today, more people watch golf tournaments than any other sport in South Africa. There's a golf tournament every single week other than Christmas and New Year around the world somewhere and we have all our young guys playing. So they are the most wonderful ambassadors representing South Africa, watching and playing in these great tournaments, which is fantastic. And are so many of the guys, I say again, are helping charity themselves because they realize how blessed they are to be playing for this kind of money that we play for today. The teams of development golfers from the South African Golf Development Board and South African Disabled Golf Association enjoyed their interaction with Gary Player, SA's legendary golfer. I feel so happy because it's my first time here in Sun City and it's my first time playing here in this tournament. I think the advice that he gave us, Mr. Gary Player gave us, was such amazing advice because I've been struggling with some um, hitting my, my drivers and, and stuff. So he told me how to use my hips more to, to make my, dri my driving and my irons go straight. And he went to parting that he said, you must also focus on the ball, look at the, ball, at the ball all the time and try to make the parts uh, go well. Well, uh, when I was in the SHGDP, we used to practice each and every day after school. Oh. Uh, I would run home, get my clubs, go back to practice until 5 o'clock. Oh. Then um, every weekend, we go to the driving range to try our long shots because at school we only done irons, so I got punished because I couldn't, I was, I was a long hitter. I wasn't allowed to hit 9-9 nine -nine pitching edge and all, so I had to hit a sandwich. Um, then we, uh, we used to go to Stefan, he's the SHGDP international coach, so he used to give us lessons each Wednesdays and Fridays to improve our game. They've got to go out and enjoy themselves tomorrow. This golf course, as I said, is really going to give them a shock tomorrow. They won't believe it. If you're an eight handicap, if you break 100 tomorrow, you're doing well. But they've got to go out and enjoy it and appreciate what actually took place there today. The evening's delicious South African food and live local entertainment was a great start to this year's annual golf fundraiser. An ideal opportunity where amateur golfers had the opportunity to play like the pros. The annual Sports Trust Golf Challenge took place the day following the Netbank Golf Challenge, providing amateur golfers a unique opportunity to play like the pros whilst raising funds for golf and sport development. Uh, we are very grateful to Netbank and Sun International, together with our trustees, uh, to allow for this tournament here today. Um, today, basically, um, it's an event where uh, each year after the um, NetBank Golf Challenge, uh, we've got um, uh, many number of companies uh, that are participating uh, in this uh, event. Uh, we've got about 30 companies, uh, basically to follow on the footsteps of the pros uh, that have been playing here uh, you know, for the past uh, four days or so. Uh, and the purpose of the event uh, is not only to have um, 
Uh, I think we've got uh, around uh, 120 players uh, that are playing here, excluding the, uh, uh, the developmental uh, team. Uh, it's not only for them to enjoy the, the courses was prepared for the NetBank Golf Challenge, uh, but importantly is to uh, raise money for uh, the work of the Sports Trust. This year, the golfers had an early registration at the Gary Player Country Club, where they received their golf shirts and gifts for the day. The competition format was a four-ball lines with two scores to count. The Browns Bush Hackers four-ball started the day's play on the first tee showing their team spirit at this year's event. The amateur golfers enjoyed a challenging day out on the course, with their golf skills being put to the test on this Gary Player design course. The course and greens were in pristine condition and the amateur golfers had to concentrate when reading their lines to sink their putts. On the day there were a variety of prizes on offer for the longest driver the 9th and nearest to the pin prizes were on offer at the 4th, 7th, 12th and 16th holes. The golfers were also tested for the straightest drive by flight scope. The young developing golfers were also put to the test and playing from the pro tees which gave them the necessary experience which will help them with their game and a real experience and understanding of what it means to play like a professional. Well, it was very tough out there today. We were lucky to get the early morning tee off time. So I feel really sorry for people playing now at midday, uh, but it certainly makes you realize just how good Lee Westwood's final round of 64 was on Sunday afternoon. Well, there are always a couple of really difficult holes here. Uh, I think the third hole, driving on the third's always really, really tricky. Uh, then 11, getting it over the slute on 11, I managed to just leak it over on the right-hand side. And then 17 is always quite tricky as well. From the very first time they swing a golf club, usually at primary school, the development golfers are put on a path that allows them to advance through the ranks. The next 10 years, hopefully, I'm on tour, European tour, PGA tour. I'm playing most of the junior tournaments in South Africa now. So my, my golf rankings, it, it went down a bit this year. Um, I made the Springbok under 16 team last year. We went to Italy and everything. So just working on a few stuff. Hopefully, in the long term, we can make it happen. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to thank my parents um, for giving me the opportunity to play golf, to start playing golf. And then everything SA Golf and Nomads do for us, I mean for Junior Golf, Amateur Golf, SA GDP, Golf RSA, they do so much for us. Every tournament we have, the, literally everything you need, you, they give it to you. So that helps a lot, giving you the experience to be on top someday, that, that helps a lot. The golfers endured a long, hot day that was very challenging and it certainly gave them a good idea of what it's like to play off the professional tees. Out on the course, they had an opportunity to win the longest drive and the nearest to the pin prizes. After a long day out on the course, the 34 teams gathered together to enjoy a prize-giving gala dinner at the King's Ballroom at Sun City, where the winners would be announced. And the fundraising check handover would be presented to the Sports Trust from funds raised for the sold-out charity golfing day. Today is a special uh, day in the calendar of the Sports Trust uh, because um, this is an event where we raise the most uh, money in one event. Uh, we're raising um, uh, about a million rands for sports development in South, South Africa, especially focusing on um, development of uh, golf. Guests were treated to a VIP experience with live entertainment by the famous South African band Mikasa, who entertained them during dinner. Thereafter, the prize giving ceremony took place and prizes handed out to the winners. Yeah, it's a pretty tough day out, you know, you, you try and practice a little bit beforehand. We always try and get the very early tee off time so we don't get baked in the sun of Sun City. Uh, but it was a long day for me. Uh, I was very appreciative of the new handicapping system. Gave me an extra couple of shots today, but we weren't close to the prizes, that's for sure. This Premier Golf fundraising event is an ideal opportunity for the corporates to support this sports trust as funds raise the assist with golf development and providing sports kit and equipment. I think, I think as corporates, 
we just don't do enough. And personally, I'm passionate about, about giving back. And giving back to a sports trust is something that we don't get right all the time. And I think as banks, as corporates, we just need to fundamentally start investing in a culture that takes kids off the streets. And I think investing in something like this just works for APSA. And we have decided as a bank we're going to do it annually. Uh, it's very special because uh, we get to have uh, some people who, are, who don't afford some of the things. We, as we know, golf is very expensive, so we get to, to find some unfortunate families. Okay, for example, for some of us, we were lucky we did fund uh, the development and all the fundraising which have been taking place right here. It's going to help us to improve in our games and all. Oh, it was fantastic. I think, you know, when we, when we watched the players play on the Sunday, and how difficult it was, especially on the 18th and, and the other holes. And to actually be able to execute those shots, it was special. It was really special. The Sports Trust remains committed to transformation and changing sports by working closely together with its trustees and corporate donors so that all South Africans have an opportunity to participate in sport. Would you please forgive me? Sports Trust acts as an implementation partner to its trustees, stakeholders and corporate donors. It distributes sporting equipment, kits and installs sports facilities in rural and historically disadvantaged communities in South Africa across all sporting codes for both abled and disabled sports. 